Welcome to the Windy City Bender Podcast with your hosts, Noli, Boatsy, and Jerem. How's it going, everybody? Welcome to episode 21. This one is a bit easier to uh, to name, I think. We're going to go with the Makita on this one. How could you know Makita? Stan, man. Uh, episode 21 with you here is Poets, Noli, hey. and Jerem. Hey. Uh, got some stuff to talk about today. Going to start with some Hawks talk and then go into NHL talk with the season uh, getting close. We got prospect journeys and training camp schedules and all that stuff coming out. So, Getting excited. Yeah, we're getting there. Yeah. We're getting there. Finally. Finally. Um, Going to go ahead and jump right in. It. Oh, also, uh, we have a, a special guest. Uh, phone call coming in today. Nice little phone interview from uh, Phil Kessel, number four. Yeah, number four. Robert Morris's own yeah. Chris Seamark. The uh, what was it? The uh, the legend, the Crestwood oh, kid. The Crestwood kid. Yeah, the yeah. Crestwood kid. Crestwood kid. Yeah. Living the dream. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, let's get started. Cody Franson gets a PTO from the Hawks. Exciting. So he originally at the beginning of the week said that he was just down to two teams, and it was the Hawks and the Oilers, mm-hmm. which. If the Oilers are off, and I don't, I mean, that's hard to turn them down right now mm-hmm. where they're at. But at the same time, I, uh, it's hard to turn on the Blackhawks too. Yeah. So he announced that, or well, the Hawks announced that they gave him a professional tryout, which, which is probably the best way to do this. If, for us. if mm-hmm. you look at it at first, you're kind of like, oh, what the fuck, like a tryout. But at the same time, then you're like, oh, well, the Hosa contract's not off the books yet, so they need to buy some time till the season starts. So it's. Kind of looking like he's going to be a member of the Blackhawks. Yeah. It's a smart move, um, giving him the PTO. And um, it's good. Like, it's awesome that he's willing to take that yeah. PTO yeah. and wait. If, if it is, does go down like that, to wait till yeah. the season starts till that LTIR goes on. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's pretty fur to. That's yeah, kinda, that, not many players will do that. No, that's the kind of guy that you definitely want on your team. Mm-hmm. Um, Especially... Um, when the Hawks are lacking in D. Yeah. Yeah. And he's going to help out a lot. I don't know where he's going to uh, uh, land. Uh, I think we're going to probably going to see Keith and um, fucking Murphy. Murphy. Thank you. Um, I was, are you sure? I, uh, I thought I saw Keith and, or Murphy and uh, Siebes. Murphy and Siebes. I thought I saw that a couple of places saying that. Yeah. But I could see that. Well, then maybe it'd be. Keith Keith. And, uh, Keith I mean, does, he, does yeah. he almost have to get put into that top four role? I mean, I, I would put him there immediately. I mean, not or he do doesn't you, necessarily have to, but the way it's looking right now, yeah. But the thing is, if you do the him with Keith, then he's your top two pairing, and I don't know if he's ready for that role yet. Yeah. Or do you well, see? which is why I I wanted I was putting him and Connor Murphy up Murphy there, and Keith, Keith and Murphy, yeah. which would kind of make more sense because Murphy's more of a stay at home guy, mm-hmm. block shots kind of guy. With whereas Keith is more offensive, exactly. And then Seabrook is <laughs> kind of the same thing as and, a Murphy. But yeah, yeah. Which gives Cody France and the the opportunity to offensive kind of, opportunities. Yeah. yeah. Or do you see him maybe like in the bottom pair, and then they're given the Frozen, the Polka. A chance with the top four to learn from the best. Maybe spread out the wealth a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a terrible idea. Mm-hmm. Um, Especially with uh, the word coming out about Rosie not being 100%. Yeah. Which threw a little party after I heard that. <laughs> but also not. But once I heard and the whole thing with Franzen, I was like, okay, it's, it's okay. It's yeah. time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I took a shot. Of uh, of something I don't know what it was. It was <laughs> did blue. you shoot him? Is that no, 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 no. You no, shot no. him. I took a shot at That's why of, of alcohol. It was, it was blue. I don't. Know. I, black, I, I blacked out after it happened. Um, one shot and you're yeah, out. Yeah, huh? one shot and I was done. Huh. I woke up in like the hospital. It was weird. Um, it, it was called like shield fluid. It was like, it was like Windex or something. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Uh, don't don't drink neat. the Kool Aid, bud. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Hawks have options now. Uh, they got Forsling, Kempney, Gustafson, and Svedberg still uh, to and round Polka. out that. Oh yeah, and Polka to round out that final uh, that final pair. I'm sorry, I'm gonna be that person that keeps saying it. Polka needs a chance. Mm-hmm. Well, his chance is gonna come in training camp and in, in preseason. So. And 
like we said, their D is kind of eh. So, I mean, this yeah. is his time. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is going to be a, a legitimate tryout for those, for if those he, guys. There. If he does make the team out of training camp, I mm-hmm. think they need to explore moving him to possibly get some. Because I think he would be a good trade bait for a team that yeah. needs like a young defenseman. I think we're either going to see Kempney and Forsling round out that final two or Kempney and Polka. I think it's going to be Kempney and Forsling just because they've been up there uh-huh. quite a few times already. And I, I don't like, see Gustafson or Svedberg making it, really, unless Victor Svedberg somehow figured his shit out in a uh, year. Yeah, I don't, I don't think he has. No. No. Um, no. No. Even if he did, no. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm very happy about that. Uh Franz are getting that PTO. Um, Definitely exciting. He'll, he'll be news. helpful. Yep. He's going to be very helpful. Uh, talked about the prospect tourney. That starts uh, tonight, Friday the 8th. Hawks play the Rangers uh, at 6. I don't see anywhere that's showing a, a link a, a link to a stream or anything. That's um, a bummer. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe uh, maybe the Rangers have one on their website. I don't know. That's, that's the one in Michigan, right? Yeah, Michigan. Travis City. Yeah. They play Friday the 8th tonight, uh, 6 p.m., against Rangers tomorrow, the 9th, uh, 3 p.m. Uh, against the Red Wings, and then the 11th on Monday, uh, 6.30 against Carolina. And then Tuesday they play the entire Lindsay division, apparently. So, yeah, that's what it says on the website. I don't know what that means. but Yeah, what's the Lindsay division? I no idea. No idea. <laughs> but it's going to be interesting to see some of these guys go. We were talking about it in one of the last episodes. We got uh, Darren Radish, Carl Dahlstrom. Uh, Graham Nott, David Camp, and of course, uh, Debrinket, Fortin. Um, yeah, there's looking out for article. those guys in that prospect journey. There's just an article on the Hawks website about, or NHL.com actually, on Fortin and how um, uh, he's really looking forward to going into this training camp and this like, uh, what is it, the prospect camp? Prospect um, journey. Yeah. Because last year, how he he um, he knew he stood out so much and did got offered a contract basically out of that prospect camp last year. Mm-hmm. He's really trying to up his game this year and do something more. So that's something you want to hear yeah, out of a guy yeah. like that. And if he yeah. could play like he did last year, he'd be great for that bottom bottom mm-hmm. six. Mm-hmm. Well, take a look at what our rookies did last year. I mean, Hartman, Henestroza, Schmaltz, uh, Mott, Tyler Mott. I mean, those guys were huge Hayden. at points. Hayden, John Hayden, I forgot yeah. about him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we'll see them. Uh, it'll be cool to see them wearing the Hawks jersey and, and playing. Yeah, uh, just uh, they usually throw some highlights out on Twitter. Yeah. And, um, the Hawks Twitter usually throws up updates or something on that. So Yeah, I think they still live tweeted. Yeah. yeah, so if you're interested, just kept, keep your eye on Twitter. I know I will be. Mm-hmm. Um, over the years, there's been more and more discussion about um, – jerseys uh in regards to um <clears throat> native americans and uh how logos are going to get changed names are going to get changed we saw north dakota fighting sioux their name got changed the fighting hawks now yeah with their fucking united states postal service yeah logo now. um the there's always been a big debate with the redskins and the cleveland indians and the hawks and now it seems like there's some more not issues but um, this might be hearing a little bit more about this again yeah. for the Hawks. Um, I'm, I'm not 100 percent sure in the whole story. I think so, it was you that found it. Yeah. So basically, there was a seven year old junior, not junior, but like seven year old girl from Canada who local team is something Warriors, the Fighting Warriors, or something like that, and their logo is a version of the Black Hawks, kind of more towards like what the Portland Winter Hawks looks like. Mm-hmm. She said that she couldn't wear that jersey because she's Native American and that is a disrespectful logo to have it on there. And basically they said, well, this is it. You wear this or you don't play. So now there's outrage about all that. Um, I think I got a quote here from the mom. Um, A shirt's supposed to represent unity between people. My daughter's all about the culture, bringing people together with arts and sports. So being told to wear this or sit on the bench, you have to be kidding me, right? So basically, when I first saw this and I sent it to you guys, I was just like, well, is this going to be another issue for the Hawks? Because also between this, I saw that it's old, but you remember 
seeing that hawk logo where it's like the hawk but with the indian feathers and all that that some artists made up as a replacement for the hawks mm-hmm. logo that was getting pushed around again so i mean i thought this was interesting to talk about it, especially with what's going on with cleveland indians and all that i understand the argument if the uh native american community has an issue with it like i can understand them having an issue with the cleveland indians the a logo I mean, the thing, okay, so we kind of just, like, went over this before the show, and the thing is, I don't, if they're so offended by, like, some of these logos, which I can't, I'm not Native American, so I can't really argue against them or for them, because I'm, I like, I just can't feel either way, but if I am one of them, I'm going after the Redskins first, because that's, that, that's the Redskins name, that's an offensive offensive name. And the Cleveland Indians, because it's a cartoon drawing of an Indian. That's, I mean, if you're saying logos like the Fighting Sioux and the Chicago Blackhawks are offensive, but the Cleveland Indians logo isn't, Mm -hmm. that's kind of, I don't know. I think you're just going after something that's just there for you because um, the Chicago Blacks are known to go out of their way to help Indians in the local area, the Native Americans in their local area, in the Chicagoland area. Mm -hmm. They bring them to every national anthem game they have some some native american out there representing their tribe Mm -hmm. on the ice they have them at the blackhawks convention like they have respect for the native americans Mm -hmm. and um not only that but the logo is just beautiful you know there's nothing disrespectful about it as like coming from me there's nothing it's just a beautiful logo and i think it actually represents very well i do of a native american you know well and like you said, the Hawks are are always in connections with the Native American community. We, uh, the at the Hawks convention, they have their own table set out. Mm-hmm. Um, they're handing out flyers. They're handing out pins. They're you know all that jazz, and, showing off their headdresses. Yeah, and everything. Absolutely, and it it's not the 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 logo is doing nothing to uh, make fun of or you know. Um, anything like that towards native americans it's a celebration really so yeah. i don't understand i think i personally i think it when it's in the hawks aspect the black hawks aspect it's it's more of a a, um, a tribute a tribute yes thank yes you. It's, it's yeah it's promoting the native american right not demeaning it in any way right see but there's a difference though i remember in the 90s when the hawks were in the playoffs uh fans would go in and they'd have headdresses on and they'd have yes. the paint coming on their on their face yes that's different that's that can go a little too far yeah yeah, yeah. i i, I agree that. with that yeah um going to the uh fighting sioux though that's they their logo was not similar to the hawks but it was dressed just as nicely as the black Hawks. yeah logo. i'm looking at it right now and it's it's it's, it's nice it's a beautiful logo i yeah that when they got rid of that that was very upsetting because they were all about the Sioux, you know, the fighting Sioux. Like, it's not, it's just not something, it didn't seem like any disrespect at all and right. to the fighting Hawks, but none of the fans up there call them the Hawks. They call them the Sioux, Sioux still. They all mm-hmm. still wear their Sioux jerseys. I mean, it's just, it stinks that this type of thing has to happen. And a seven-year-old saying that she doesn't want to wear the jersey, that feels like it's more the parents pushing yeah. her yeah. than anything. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I I know that there's always been speculation around the Hawks logo and stuff like that, and whether or not it's going to get changed. And I really hope it doesn't, because it is a beautiful logo, and it's, it's the best logo in sports. It, it, like, and that's not even like being a bias for being right. a Hawks fan. I truly don't see a logo that's much well. There's better. there's always those lists, you know, yeah, at, on major you know sports networks like uh, ESPN, TSN, NHL.com, like all that stuff. It's, and they're always top three. Yeah, they're always in the top. So. Mm-hmm. Um, hopefully no, nothing else comes about that. Um, and the Hawks are able to keep their logo. Um, happier news. Clark Crawford has a kid. And this kid has the greatest name for a goalie. What is it? Cooper. Nice. I, That's good. I'm, I'm going to name my kid Coho. Yeah, I was just going to say <laughs> Coho is next. Uh-huh. What about Brian? Unreal. Huh? Brian. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Only if he's born on the 24th. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we have a, we have a deal on that or 
<laughs> oh, and there's a handshake yeah. for who's listening and not watching. Yeah. There was I, I a just, handshake. I just don't think he's worried about a kid anytime soon. Yeah. No, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, don't worry. I will make sure this is saved <laughs> as long as we possibly need it. Yeah. Crow and his uh, his girlfriend, Christy. Welcome to Baby Cooper. Uh, sometime last week because it doesn't have the date on here. Uh, so, yeah, Cooper. Cooper Crawford. Ooh, I like that. Cooper Crawford. That's neat. CC. CC. Hey, you know who has the initial CC? Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Chris Seamock. <laughs> We're calling Chris Seamock right after this. All right, boys, we have the uh, the famous Chris Seamock uh, on the phone today. Chris, how you doing today, buddy? Good. How about you guys? Not too bad. Not too Just, bad. Uh, fighting the uh, championship hangover off. Yeah, yeah, had a big win last I night. Saw that. That was a big. Was that a shootout win you guys went into? Yeah. Yes, sir. After five minutes of OT, mm-hmm. made it to the shootout. Huge I'm dub. Surprised, I'm surprised Potsy didn't blow it for you guys. <laughs> yeah, we were all a little worried. <laughs> I was too. Really. I mean, <laughs> all right, you guys suck. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Chris, uh, you were uh, you. I don't know. Not upset. Um, but you had uh, some thoughts on the the USA hockey role that we had talked about uh, a couple weeks ago about the uh, the no icing on the PK. Um, mm-hmm. You think that it's actually a pretty good rule? Yeah, yeah. I, I just um, from I don't think when you guys were first talking about it, which is I think is everyone's initial reaction is, wow, this rule sucks, right? It's a it's a change in the game. Um, but in reality, I think it does a couple different things for for the younger ages. So it, it's only for four, it's fourteen and under and down. So mm-hmm. midgets aren't affected by this. High school not affected. Um, but what they're doing is one obviously uh, creating an offense for the power play team, which is ultimately what everybody wants. And then the second thing it's going to do. It's going to force the uh, penalty kill to become a little more creative. Um, and once they become midgets, how easy is it going to tell you, or easy for a coach to tell somebody, hey, you get to dump the uh, dump the puck out. Mites and squirts can't even dump the puck out anyways. You know, so when <laughs> it's not, <That's> fair. <laughs> it's not, not a big uh, difference, I don't think. And it's just creating more offense. It's going to teach some of the younger younger players how to be more creative, you know, and maybe we see more uh, offensive penalty killing. So, do you think there's any way that this kind of thing goes all the way up to like collegiate levels and just slowly works its way up to higher levels? Yeah. No, no. I I think I think it's a purely De- developmental develop, thing. Developmental thing. Okay. Um, you know, try to catch up with everyone else because we're not we're not the greatest at developing players, but we're getting better, mm-hmm. and we're doing different things and creating different rules uh, that allow some of our younger players to develop the skills rather than, you know, just dump the puck out of the zone every two minutes on a penalty kill. Mm-hmm. Do you do you think that um, instead of fourteen they should drop it down to maybe like the age twelve? Because I mean. By age like thirteen, fourteen, you're hitting and everything. So do you think it's like more of a something that you, they should allow once, like since hitting starting up and all that, like, or do you think it's a good spot well, where it's at at fourteen? No, I, I like I like where it's at. Um, I don't think there's uh, like I said. I don't. You, how easy is it going to tell when you go from a bantam to a midget? Hey, you get to ice the puck down, like just. It's still part of the developmental stage. Now, once you get to be 15, 16, that's when you're almost fully developed as whatever you're going to be at a hockey player level. Mm-hmm. Um, so I like it exactly where it's at. Okay. Neat. Good Neat. to hear. Uh... <laughs> I, I can tell you guys are still not a fan of it. So. It's. I'm not. It, I'm still, like, on the fence, but, like, that – I was so against it, but, like, listening to – like you talk about mm-hmm. it and I know like you're big into like coaching and everything, you know, you got the whole Hoffman estates or whatever thing going on. So like I seeing that you like it as much as you do and where you're at coaching wise, it's right. It, it, de- 
it definitely helps me change it, my mind a little bit. Yeah, your your reason with it definitely makes more sense than just the blind paper of oh, right. more icing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it uh, it's a change, but I think it's just for developmental purposes more than anything. It's not right. It's not um, something that's like trying to change hockey. So yeah, and that's I feel like that's kind of what got me is just. They're changing the game again, trying to just do everything they can to just change the game, and it's just frustrating. Mm-hmm. Well, thanks for clearing that up. <laughs> that actually, it does actually kind of start to make sense now. I mean, it, yeah, I, I still don't a hundred percent agree with it. I think it's, I don't know, maybe a step, a step too far because, I don't know. I feel like that that kind of thing could be eradicated in in practice or something i don't know why that has to be brought into games but uh i understand the idea uh behind it um there are more rule change uh changes chris uh that happened the other day uh if you get the uh offsides video review wrong you get a two-minute penalty what do you think about that really when did that happen uh i think a couple days ago ago, yeah. yeah 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 wow um why not? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. do, you, do you lose your timeout too, as well? I don't think so. I think it's I, just yeah, you get a two minute penalty. So, are you still limited to one time or one challenge? Uh, I would assume so. Yeah. I, 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 I think your timeout would be gone. See, they weren't very clear on that part. Yeah, I would assume that your timeout is gone and you get the two minute penalty because they they didn't like the fact that uh, teams were using that basically as their timeout. You know. Yeah, well, I, that's what happens when you put a new rule and you yeah. find a way around it. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> See, my issue with that one though is how many times have they gone on a video review for offsides and still get it wrong? Yeah, I know. exactly. Who's gonna be that's the first? Probably, that's probably the bigger problem. Yeah, more so than anything. <laughs> mm-hmm. When you see it clearly on the television, you're like. Uh, why are they still getting it wrong? Yeah. What was it the yeah. one with the Hawks in Minnesota? Taves, I think. Right? Yeah, yeah, Taves was just like clearly, and they still call it good. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then it got it got turned around on the Hawks like a game later. I yeah, believe. yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that's that's where this I don't like this rule because I mean losing your timeout's huge as it is, and then if you throw in a two minute penalty on a play, especially if the ref still gets it wrong, mm-hmm. how how livid are you going to be? That yeah. team just scored a goal that shouldn't have been a goal, and now they're on the power play. That's rough. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I guess I would have to feel or see what it exactly happens, but um, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I, I I think that the bigger issue is not whether or not they're using it as a timeout or not. It's whether or not the referees are getting this shit right. Yeah, yeah. That's, I mean, because that was an issue all throughout the playoffs too. Yeah, I, the video reviews were horrendous. Yeah, they and um, they kept. <laughs> If you challenge a goalie interference, they kept it just the timeout. It's not a penalty. Because they said there's too many, too much gray space into and what is yeah. actually goalie interference, which blows my <laughs> mind. That okay, you, you you admit it, but you don't fix it. You yeah, don't get right. a clear definition. Well, that was the thing. I thought it was interesting that they only did uh, made this rule for offsides mm-hmm. and not not Everything. for the goalie uh, goalie interference or high stick or whatever else you can review. Mm-hmm. It was just the offsides. Yeah. Because then that's the most common challenge. Well, then why not just do it for everything then? Because there's such a gray area in goalie interference on what yeah. is and what isn't. I guess. Yeah. I don't know. What was the the other? Wasn't there another rule? There's change? an icing. If you ice the puck, you're no longer allowed to use your timeout. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's right. Did you hear about that one, T Mac? That's a good one. You like that one? That is. That's yeah. That is a good one. I mean that. I mean that's the whole. People are just wasting it, or not wasting their time out, but you know, finding once again, we're talking about a rule change and finding a way around it. Um, that seems like a pretty good idea. Mm-hmm. I like that one. Yeah. And then the last one was, if I, I believe I read this correctly, if I might be a little bit wrong because it was kind of confusing wording. If you high stake the puck in the offensive zone on the power play, instead of the play coming all the way down to the, your your zone. It goes outside of your offensive, uh, the offensive zone. Yeah, it's just in the neutral at the outside. Zone. Yeah, yeah, in the neutral zone, but not towards your end. Yeah, towards the end of your end. It just end. comes outside the zone. Basically. Only on the power play. I, yes, that's, that's what, what it, it sounded like. like. Yeah, 
That's dumb. So all I'm getting out of these rule changes is they want more goals. Offense. Yeah. yeah. Huh. I, I, I hate I hate that last one. That's so stupid. Yeah, yeah. that's there's dumb. No, there's no point. Why even call it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how often? I is mean, it? that's like if, if if here we go again. If a guy like dumps a puck out high, like everyone's doing the hoist now. If mm-hmm. someone can knock it down at the blue line and save yourself going all the way down, and it's just outside mm-hmm. the zone. Yeah, like that's a big advantage. That's that's, yeah. that's a solid ten fifteen seconds of skating back and coming back up the ice compared to just another exactly. face off. That's dumb. Yeah, it's yeah. real dumb. So. Um, moving on, Chris, you wrote a, a, a nice little blog for our, our website about the what USA hockey would look like if they went to the Olympics. So for, first off, how still how salty are you that uh, no Olympics? Uh, it's not gonna bother me. I think we'll still see some quality hockey, mm-hmm. but it's just. It, I mean, it'd be so much better with. All the NHLers that get over there and play, I don't know. It's just yeah, missing. It, it, it's it sucks. It's an opportunity, to, like we said, exactly get these players recognized throughout the world and get more people involved in hockey. And we're not going to do it. So, do you think this is actually just Canada being worried because USA looks pretty stacked right now? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. If, if you if you could, you got to reread my blog, Nolly, because I said. Canada one, two, and three. <laughs> yeah, all right, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> um, going back to trying to grow the game and everything, uh, the NHL has had their media week almost um, this week, and a lot of the things that I saw were guys trying uh, Japanese dishes and saying things in Japanese and Chinese, Chinese yeah. and and trying to pick up pucks with chopsticks, and it's like, what are you guys? doing that's i, I the, understand uh, that you're trying to like grow the game and everything and i know they're going over there yeah but like why not just bite the bullet go you're already doing x amount just do it just go who cares yeah i don't know it's you gotta have some kind of advertisement what do you want <laughs> just to go there what well, no i mean stick to be like if that's what they think's gonna help grow their name i think yeah that's what i know and like if if honest to god if the selling point is mark andre Fleury trying to pick up a puck with chopsticks so then so you think pathetic. if they were going to the olympics they wouldn't be doing all this stuff no I, if, if doing all this stuff and going to the olympics make more sense yes that's what I'm but saying. just doing this no but they're going they're going there for preseason games fair no i i know that i'm just saying it makes sense if they're doing this while going to the Olympics at the same time. But, but they're, they're still going either way. I know. You're not picking up what I'm putting no, down I, here, I, Brian. I am. You're not picking up what I'm putting down. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go through this Team USA roster. How did you uh, how'd you make your decisions here, Chris? Uh, I just picked names out of a hat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was the easiest way to do it. Yeah. Is Makes there, sense. Is there anybody that was left off the list that you really were struggling that you wanted on the list or really could have been on the list and you just Uh there was everything was everything was difficult, especially towards the the end of the forward and D besides goalies. Like goalies are a no brainer. Yeah. Like that that's all we have. Um you could go through I, I probably had a list of at least like thirty forwards that I went through and like 15 to 20 D that I went through that are like you're right on the edge. You got to see like, um, you know, Parise, Mm -hmm. you know, where, where does he fit in? I don't, I I just don't see him on the roster, you know, Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to think of some other D that I may have had on there. Um, you got Suter, McDonough, no, I think Noah Hannafin was one that mm-hmm. you know is right there. Plus, we got we got the younger kids that we don't know yet um, that may make an impact. Um, McAvoy, McAvoy. Yeah, you know McAvoy, uh, Rorensky, mm-hmm. I believe. Yep, he's American. Um, but there was like easy decisions that guys that who made the World Cup roster it was like, okay, you're not on it, like. Abdicator, no, I'll see you later. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think that kind of goes with uh, the n- whole North American team. Like, if you can 
combine those two teams, half of the USA roster in the World Cup is yeah. not yeah, making the yeah. team. Yeah, and it's like it's like Ryan Callahan. No, thank you. Like, <laughs> you. You were good. You were good, but it's it's time to get some of these other guys in here. You had your shot um, to wear USA, and that that's e- all you got. Exactly, exactly. Like really good players, but uh, you're gonna tell me like. Jack Eichel isn't going to make the team over Brandon Dubinsky, you know, like those, mm, right. those were the easy decisions to make, but there was, there's quite a big list that I had going, um, what about guys uh, that, that didn't make it. What about a guy like Bobby Ryan? He's tricky. He's like, uh, a big dude, but I don't think he, I don't think he makes a cut even though. Um, he could, if he blew it up this year, mm-hmm. if he had a good first half, he'd be on the team. Right. You know, it's kind of like, uh, when Sharp made Team Canada, he, he tore it up that first year, but he would never make that team on another year. Right. You know, so it's a lot of unknowns, but at least from my perspective right now, that's what it would look like. Mm-hmm. How'd you put these lines together? Or did you just kind of... Go one by uh, I was one. Who, uh, you know, chemistry wise, who could bring what to the table, um, and where you know where certain guys are are supposed to be fitted. Try to get a combination of uh, you know every every uh, type of player. That was that was kind of the the basis for the Lions. Mm-hmm. So that's a. Third line of Oshi, Kessler, and Kessel. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Fuck. Yeah. yeah, and that's you know that that's a that's a line that can be your shutdown line, maybe you know. Oh yeah, and you know, and Kessel can just turn it around real quick, you know. Mm-hmm. Who exactly. else you call him there? <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> just just my dad. Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah, we can make yeah. it out of that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's kind of putting together the lines or just get a, get a solid mix of every single type of player that you need. Um, you know, obviously you could you could switch a couple of those guys here and there. But. Mm-hmm. Looking at these lines, it's kind of – it does kind of get you frustrated, like knowing that there's no Olympics. And then they're saying, like, oh, the World Cup's kind of replacing the Olympics. Yeah. But having that North American team and then seeing the lines that you could have had in the Olympics without that North American team, it just, it kind of gets you frustrated because seeing like, uh, Eichel and Kane together, how much fun would that be to just to watch those two? That would be players? amazing. Yeah. Just like having Eichel Matthews and Saad in your top six makes it a completely different team. Absolutely. And then you got, you got Couturier who's, uh, a great face-off guy and a good defensive center make a big difference in that World Cup. Mm-hmm. Once again, we're talking about, like, abdicator, not on the team, Callahan, get mm-hmm. rid of Dubinsky, you know, so. Hmm. Well, you did good, kid. <laughs> you yeah. did good. I, I still don't think Quick should be over Gibson, but we'll fight that battle another well, day. Uh, yeah, I, well, you think, you think Snyder should be... Anywhere on there, then? Like, I think Schneider should be third. Really? Ooh. Gibson, Quick, Schneider. And who's been the most consistent goaltender out of those three? John Gibson, probably. Oh, I, you better look up the stats there, bud. <laughs> Corey that's, Schneider. That's your, that's your position. I, yes, I know. Corey Schneider last year had an atrocious year. Yeah, on a dog shit new jersey team yeah. even, on this even team. with that dog shit new jersey team he was terrible yeah I what, could, I, what I do you could, mean even could, with <laughs> he didn't play well like he didn't usually okay. you could steal some games there he didn't steal anything the first year he did last year he was just like all right fuck this team which is why i don't think he should be second i think he should be third i i'd put meanwhile john, I, john gibson took his team to the conference final yeah okay, uh, yeah Jonathan Quick. What, what C-Mike just did is exactly yeah, how I feel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jonathan Quick can't stay healthy. Numbers are down. Well, Doesn't Gibson what, what too? What has John Gibson been healthy? Yeah. yeah. That what? fucking turned right around on yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> He's more healthy than Quick's been, though. So Okay, but Corey Snyder's got the best save for, career save percentage out of all of them. I bet you. Even so, it doesn't... 
from what he's done from the it's, past oh, wait, year. It does. It doesn't what <laughs> you're like stuttering. There. No, 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 no. <laughs> from last year, comparing all three of these, I'm putting Gibson, Quick, and Schneider. Compared to last year, I okay. Last year only, I'll take that. Yeah, I'm not. No. I'm not going off no. of career statistics. I'm going just just last coming year. off of what they're doing off the of last year. I'm I don't give a fuck what they did. Quick before. last still. Quick didn't even play last year. He barely played. <laughs> And he was still better than Schneider. Oh, really? Oh, so is that does that go back to our God. Crystal Tang argument? Yeah, if you want to drop the gloves right now, I'm ready, <laughs> dude. Because what you just said goes back to the Crystal Tang argument. That's how bad Schneider was. <laughs> oh, just man. saying. Just Whatever. saying. Anyway, all right. So, see, Mike, how about uh, you said it was pretty easy to pick these three goalies, but what about like a guy like Ben Bishop? I know he's hurt a lot, but no, no <laughs> way, no way. I mean, that was that one was easy. I think. I just think those guys have the most to offer in order for a statistics b who can steal you a game and you know that's that's basically what I could go off of. And, I don't think Bishop mm-hmm. is a steal a game guy. Okay, I wasn't. I I agree with you. I was just curious about because just he's another big name goalie that's an American. That's uh-huh. about the only yeah. other one. And yeah, and that's and that's true. And he's also the only guy that's been traded. What three times now? <laughs> yeah, or two or three times. So, but compare, he's the only one that made it to the final, like other than Quick. True, very true. But he is also very injury prone. Yes, so. <laughs> very very. Um, Chris, what happens to if these guys end up saying "fuck the NHL" and going over? How, how many people? <laughs> no, how many people do you think are going to end up doing it? Do you think anybody is going to be ballsy uh, enough? Uh, old old kid. Yeah. yeah, I don't think it's going to be a foreign. It's going to be. I don't a see Russian any North or, Americans doing no. it. Yeah, no, they they can't. They can't afford to do that and no. breach their contract. They care more about the Stanley Cup than they do about a gold medal, anyway. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Chris, you're a huge Red Wings guy. Um, what are your thoughts on this whole? Uh, Andreas Anathas- Anathasio business. Um, I feel like we're losing probably our best prospect. Uh huh. Um, but at the same time, he doesn't really have any leverage. Um, I think he could be a good player, but I I don't know. The Red Wings are so they're like five years away from being decent. So. Mm-hmm. Well, they just signed Robbie Russo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. I mean. Sweet. Well, we have we have zero quality defensemen. Um, so Enter Robbie hard. Russo. Yeah. So hopefully. You mean Mike Green's not worth the six million? Than everyone else. How do you how do you feel about the whole cap issue that they're under right now and? I know they have a couple of guys that can go on LTIR, but I mean they they got some some big contracts for guys that might not need them. Oh, I think you I think you just hit it on the head. They gave a bunch of money to people that don't deserve it. They and pulled the Stan Bowman. Stuck, we're stuck in uh, we're stuck in Capel. At least you guys have a good team. <laughs> 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 so to. Quickly think about it off the top of your head. Who who would you? I mean, they have to move somebody. Who would you be looking to move if you were running the team to fix the cap problem? It's got to be one of the goalies, right? Uh, I would trade both the goalies. <laughs> I'd trade both the goalies. I'd trade. Uh, Just go with the Jared Coro. Yeah, I don't. I don't care. <laughs> it's not like it, 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 what. I, I, Plenty of teams will be looking for goalies now, depending on how well they played. Howard Howard played okay last year, you know, mm-hmm. at times, and then Mrazek was supposed to be the up and comer. But if you could get, if you could trade both of them and just bring up some young guy, I'd do that. Um, Sign a veteran chief for backup. They they uh, they love Abdicator, even though I don't think he's any good. Um. I shouldn't say any good, but he's not worth the contract that he's under. Right. And then um, 
you know, I don't know. I, I'd say just fire sale, everyone. <laughs> nice. It's a fucking shit can fire. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, they also released uh, images of the uh, the new Little Caesars arena. How how did you did you look at those? How are you uh, how are you feeling about it? Yeah, it was awesome. Actually, one of my buddies uh, he went there and took a tour of everything. So I got like really? an inside look at all the shit. Um, and then I think we're actually I, I should be going there for a bachelor party uh, in November. So that it looks awesome. I really yeah. like the Jumbotron, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah I do, cool, too. Yeah, cool and new feature to it, so... The the whole lights on the ceiling? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to so, be a cool arena to yeah. go see. How many times are you going to make the trek up there, you think? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I only made it to the Joe once. Really? So we'll, we'll have to see, yeah. And I did it uh, two seasons ago when they originally said it was the last season. Oh okay. Yeah. And they they postponed it for another year. Yeah. So, how happy are you that the center ice logo is not a big pizza pie? <laughs> I'm disappointed <laughs> in that. Yeah, I mean, it's it's funny because like it's Little Caesars, and it's like you think about the pizza that we have here in Chicago. <laughs> you're like, I would never want my arena to be called. Little Caesars. <laughs> so, it would kind of fit yeah. the team right now, though. If you yeah, had I know. In the middle, it does. It's very fitting. Yeah. <laughs> very fitting. All right, see. Thanks for uh, thanks for joining us. Thank you for the uh, blog again. Uh-huh. It was uh, well worth it read, yeah. and uh, can't wait for the yeah, next one. Yeah, I still think that. Uh, yeah. I, I still think you should go and make yourself a Team Canada one, though. Uh, but, uh, I, mean, <laughs> I may, but probably not. Uh, I, I think I got a couple other things that I could do right. um, that we kind of discussed, but we'll, yeah. we'll see. All right. All right. Well, have have a fun day at work, bud. Yeah. All right. All see right. You guys. Bye, buddy. Thanks, bud. I really don't like how you guys gang up on me all the time. Well, you know, it's easy to do when you act like the way that you do. You... You walk in. What? You set yourself up like yes. a lot of the time. You really do. Oh my god! Like with that I'm, socks hat. Come on. I made a legitimate. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I made a legitimate point about God. Fuck! I, I I'm not good at arguing. Also, I I'm very bad at it. Every time. When, you did have a couple of stutters in that. Yeah, I I'm terrible at arguments. Real bad. So I like. I shouldn't be a lawyer. <laughs> um, I'm glad you know that. Yeah, <laughs> no, shouldn't be a lawyer. Uh, I shouldn't be in a relationship. I'll, just, I'll lose all the arguments, and then. Uh, well, I mean, maybe yeah. that's a good thing, though. Yeah. Maybe it makes a relationship last. Yeah, but then I'm not wearing the pants anymore. But, you know, it's fine. Exactly. You wear women's pants anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hang on. <laughs> We, go we, we can we can move past. It, no, no, worry. we got to go through the story because people think I'm gonna be walking around in like <laughs> women's jeans, which is only slightly true. So what happened was, um, God, this is so off topic. Um, freshman year at Robert Morris University, uh, we had to uh, dress up for home games and uh, suit and tie and all that jazz. You Michael Scott it, huh? You Michael Scott it. <laughs> In a, in a sense. Kind of. Oh, my God. You didn't buy the suit, though. No, I didn't. Um, uh, first game, um, I go to put on my pants, and I'm like, there's like an elastic waistband in this thing. It's pretty awesome. Like, I don't have to wear a belt if I don't want to, but I still did because it looks good. Um, so I'm wearing it, and, like, I told uh, Noli about it, and I told Ski, uh, the other guy that's in our uh, was in our uh, carpool, and, and they're like, that's fucking weird like i've never had a pair of pants that's ever had any elastic waistband on it so it's like one of the last games of the year and i'm putting on my pants and my mom's like are you are you wearing my pants and i was like no 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 these are my my dress pants for for hockey she's like do they have an elastic waistband on it i was like yeah she's like those are my pants can i have my pants back so for almost an entire year i wore an my entire mother's, season my mother's dress pants Oh, the, the thing that gets me the most is that they fit. <laughs> yes, they did. They fit beautifully. Those are the most comfortable pants I've ever had. Oh my god! They honestly, God, were they Coats. were the most comfortable pants I think I've ever Jeez. had in my life. Take a drink, bud. Yeah, I mean, I wish I hadn't done it. I really do. I wish it hadn't happened, and I'm never gonna do that again. I'm always gonna make sure I'm not wearing my mom's pants. <laughs> 
So is that transferred into like your mom's shorts or your your mom's jeans? No, no. Your sister's shirts? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no dresses. Once, but I was kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think that's enough of therapy couch today. Yeah. Let's go. Let's move on. Uh, <laughs> no more Potsy's corner. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> I don't even know how to transition into this, so we're just going to go to it. So, Ryan, big news coming from the Central Division. Yeah, you go ahead and take that one. Um, I'm going to sit in the corner for a second. <laughs> take a few uh, topics off. Yeah. Stanley Cup final team, Nashville Predators, announced that Ryan Ellis will miss start of the season after a knee surgery, which they never said what kind of surgery it was to fix, but um, he'll be out four to six months, and it's they said uh, – it's looking. It's going to go the full full six. So that's a huge blow to the Nashville Predators and huge gain for the Chicago Blackhawks. Huge gain for the entire division. Yeah, oh, shit. it really is. Um, Na- Nashville's definitely going to hurt without him, but at the same time, they have so much going on that it's 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 going to be a bump in the road. But they're not going. To, they're definitely going to be able to overcome it. But it's a huge bump in the road. Yeah, I we were talking about this when we heard it um, in the car. Um, we we're wondering if this happened in the playoff run or whether it just happened during training now, because if it happened during the playoff run, it's pretty irresponsible to get this done now. Yeah. Cause if it, if it happened in playoffs, you're getting that surgery right away and you're, yeah. you're coming in early in the season, not missing half the year. Yeah. They said January 1st is the uh, shooting. So I'm, I'm reading this. Um, the defenseman even played despite being hurt in the decisive game six before having surgery. This is the reason why Nashville picked up um, Emelin from the Golden Knights. Mm. So it's been known for a little bit. Well, there you go. That's hmm. that's stupid. What do you th- get, just get the surgery? I mean, if you think you might be able to battle through it, oh, I'm not sure. I, I might be able to. No, fuck off. I mean, it could have been in the point, though, that they couldn't. What do you mean they couldn't? Well, I mean, isn't there stuff like stuff that had to happen? Like, if it was really, I don't know. When did he just say recently had the surgery, or he like just had it yeah. last week? All right, well then, it hates back because I would say like, what if it's like you can't do shit if it's swollen, you can't do all that. But I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, if it's been that long, there's no way that yeah, was the case. I mean, there's no reason why they couldn't do this a month after or a couple weeks after the the final ended. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything about why it took so long for. Yeah. You won't be skating for approximately three more weeks. And the recovery won't even start till then. They won't be judged till then. Yikes. I don't know. Yikes. It, this is a guy who plays 24 minutes a night, you know. And I mean, coming off one of his best seasons. Yeah. 38 points in 71 games last year. Yeah. And he's big, uh big defensive defenseman that comes in clutch and point wise. So, I mean. Mm-hmm. It's you know, definitely it's, a tough blow. This is also help in their favor, though, because all that money, they put them in LTR. That's just banking up money for trade deadline moves, though, too. Yeah, but he'll be back by then. Fair. Um, fair. Yeah. I don't know. Anytime I think I have something like good, I just... <laughs> nope. Welcome okay. to my life. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you guys just start thinking before you talk? Then? I know. <laughs> uh, another defenseman. Uh May or may not be able to start the regular season. Ek Eric Carlson. Yeah, voted best defenseman in the league right now. Yeah. Um, just going back to his injury during the playoffs last year, um, he's not feeling a hundred percent still. He had surgery uh, June fourteenth, so I mean it. It's been a while already. Um, Which is when else probably should have gotten this shit done, right? But it's still, don't get upset about it because it's the national predator. I know. So I just think it, that's stupid. <laughs> um, dumb. Carlson isn't even skating yet after. That's not a good sign. Yeah. No. But uh, he said it's, he actually, uh, let me find it again. Fuck. Um, sorry, 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 sorry. It sorry. For, for the description of the scar. Oh. Um, it's pretty gross. He said, it, once I start skating, you never know how quick things uh, will develop. If everything is healed, I should be fine to push it by then. But if 
if I don't feel ready, it's probably going to be better for me not to start the season, but I'll be back sometime in October for sure. So, I mean, it's not it, it seems like he's not going to be missing much of the season. But starting without your captain, and your he just leader. wants to make sure he's one hundred percent. Yeah, and for he what goes, they, that's for the what they, yeah, what they rely on him for. I mean, take the couple weeks because yeah. especially if they can make do what they did last year and make a deep run in the playoffs, they're going to be on him. Yeah, they're going to be. He's going to be carrying this team. Yeah. So, oh, he, this is what I was looking for. So, it said um, Carlson played the whole playoffs with. Um, uh, two hairline fractures in his left heel and muscle damage in his ankle. Injuries that led to a postseason MRI that revealed the damage to his tendons, which um, they actually he actually had no more tendons left in his foot, and they had to put in uh, a fake one. So that hurts he's, me just thinking about. Yeah, that. he said uh, the scar is right where the foot bends. It's a little bit open, which is kind of annoying sometimes. So I wear a lot of sandals. So unbelievable. The, the guy who breaks his foot and loses cartilage and tendons and all that plays through a whole playoff oh my wound's kind of open still but you know i just wear sandals it's not a big deal Um, yeah like i'm not gonna get this glued shut or anything yeah i'm just gonna wear sandals instead and let the blood do what it has to do like the guy's a just living fucking legend he's just a beauty but so i mean that's not as bad as the ryan ellis news no definitely not great news going into the season for the especially for like you guys i mean you're a huge oh yeah he's one of the guy he's one of the most fun players to watch in the league Mm -hmm. um well the senator fans are going to be watching uh eric carlson with fifteen thousand less or uh 1500 i'm sorry less people in the arena yeah yeah 1500 seats taken out of the canadian (laughs) tire center not even not they're still there. They just put tarps over it. Yes, yes. It looks ridiculous. Um, it says Ottawa Senators hockey on the tarps, and it's yeah. I don't know. It didn't really even try, uh, but I I think it was a soccer team uh, in Ottawa. I think it was like the Ottawa Generals or something like that. I don't know. I can't remember. Um, they tweeted out after this had come on. They're like, oh, we just picked up 1500 seats off the street so now we got 15 extra 1500 extra tickets to sell if you guys want to come out good for them yeah i thought that was pretty funny um I, so they have a hard a, time filling the stadium I so their plan <laughs> is to take away the cheap seats yeah I think so it looks like they're pathetic. selling out yeah <laughs> kind of pathetic i don't know um I've been reading a lot about this whole situation and a lot of people are saying that it's it's not the team it's location there's people that I was reading the like, comments on it, and someone was like, I was there for a game last season, and it was absolutely ridiculous trying to find my way to get to the arena. I guess it's like 30 minutes out of the actual city. Hmm. It's not even like, it's nowhere near Ottawa. Well, here's what this says. There are many theories as to why the centers have recently struggled with attendance, from arena placement to prices and citywide payroll problems. Last year in particular was their worst attendance season in 20 years, and it's hard to nail down exactly why the center has struggled to draw in fans despite being better than projected last year. If the Detroit Red Wings can still sell out games, why yeah, can't the Ottawa Senators? With all the issues that are going on in Detroit right now, why can't Ottawa can fucking figure it out? Yeah, I know. I get that they're stuck between Montreal and Toronto, two of the biggest biggest teams in the NHL, but still, I mean, they've sold out they they've sold out before. I mean, they've I don't I don't get it. I don't know. I mean, a Canadian team you expect them to Yeah. Have no problem selling tickets. I mean, is it bad to the point where it's almost like are they, is it even worth keeping them in Ottawa? Oh, they're never gonna move. They're not going to move. If Carolina... I mean, if you mean, like, relocation, yeah. no, there's no way that they're going to move that. They're, they might move uh, their arena somewhere else if they're having that much difficulty. They need but. to move the arena to the city. Yeah, I mean, if Carolina yeah. and the Florida Panthers are still... Yeah. And Arizona Coyotes are still there, there's... Yeah. There's Ottawa's no way Ottawa's move. moving anywhere. <laughs> I mean, they're technically one of the first teams to ever be made in the NHL. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I don't think that's going to be an issue. Maybe I don't think that this is gonna fix their problems either. What a know. what a Batman thing to do though. Yeah, I know. Leave Arizona and Carolina and, and then move, move Ottawa. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Oh, Ottawa, you, you Ottawa guys wanted to, the Quebec Nordiques? Yeah, I was going to say, go. Ottawa moves to Quebec. Yeah. I don't know. I don't think covering 1,500 seats in TARP is going to solve the problems in any way, but... Like I said, especially good the, luck to you. The it's the cheaper seats. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, it's not like they could throw tarps on the. No, I know. I'm just the saying, ones by the I'm glass just, or anything. No, I know. First I'm five row is gone. I'm Put, just like, saying cardboard people up instead. Yeah. It just it just it's funny to me. Oh, attendance is an issue. So people are saying the prices are too high. Well, here's our an idea. Let's take away the seats that are the lower yeah. price. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Well. At least they're not the Colorado Avalanche, right? <laughs> what Isn't that what it all comes show. down to? It's all what everything comes down to. It, they're so bad that even Matt Duchesne's like, guys, I'm not coming to training camp. It's not happening. Allegedly. 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 Um, I cannot believe that he has been traded yet. Truly. I, like don't, what? I don't know how it hasn't happened. I don't know if Joe Sackick is just that bad of a general manager, or if he's just asking for too much. It's, it, is it an ego thing now for Sackick? Like he sees know, all man. these players, other teams being able to get their what they want for their players. So I have no idea. It's I mean they've come out and said that Duchesne's trade bait, and Duchesne's come out and said that he doesn't want to be there. I mean why? Why is what is he doing there? Yeah. Well, this happened with um, Truba last year of the Winnipeg Jets. Um, Truba um, said he wasn't going to go back uh, to the Jets and held out of training camp and everything, and then he ended up getting Start of the season, too, didn't he miss the like, yeah, first he, couple weeks? Yeah, he held out until November 7th um, and signed a two-year, $6 million deal. Which, do you really want somebody like that on your team? That's what I was just going to say. Like, I... I understand, like, you're standing up that's, for yourself and all that, but at yeah. the same time, you're still playing fucking hockey in the NHL, that's, man. But for him, it's a different situation. He was an RFA. That's the, If he wanted to change, that's the only way he can do it is hold out and all that. Duchesne is not – he's got one year left on his contract, then he's a UFA. But that – I mean, the same kind of thing happened with Jonathan Drew, and he got dropped down to the A because he was playing, like, dog shit, and then he just doesn't mm-hmm. show up to games, and then he got dropped down to the juniors, and he didn't even go – to yeah. wherever the team was, I can't remember. Like, and now they ended up trading him to Montreal, but he had a great year last year. Like, mm-hmm. that's just a, I don't know, man. It's just a selfish thing where, hey, uh, you get dropped in. Well, in Drew Ann's case, you get dropped onto the A. Fucking play, dude. Like, yeah, show up. You're, you're still, still playing you're, hockey. You're for still a getting living. your money regardless. Right, exactly. Has Duchesne though, like, got to the point where he has the right? to stand out like this or is it like one of those people where he's like he hasn't done enough to be like all right i demand this he's i really don't think anybody has the right to do something like this no i mean the the thing about duchene is though he's he's one of the he could absolutely be a superstar in the nhl and he's one of the top highlights of the colorado mm-hmm. avalanche but i don't I, Still not anywhere. His past three seasons, 41 points, 59 points, 55 points. Mm -hmm. 82 games, 76 games, 77 games. Sackick said everything is quiet on all fronts on the 17th, but I will be listening to offers. So that doesn't sound too good for for Dutchie. I think Sackick just needs to go. Uh, Well, apparently one of the big problems is he's got two seasons remaining with $6 million a year. Until he's an unrestricted free agent, so you so so make the move and get something for him. And what they and what they want for him, you can eat a little bit of that yeah. cap, especially with these guys who are barely over the 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 floor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're uh, only at they have eleven million in space. They can eat two million. Yeah, teams like Nashville, Columbus, Montreal, Boston, Pittsburgh, Carolina, and Calgary have mm-hmm. all been. Linked to and the Hots were too at one point. Yeah. Were the Islanders? I think the Islanders. The Islanders had, were. They were trying to around the draft. Yeah, could you imagine if they picked up Everly and Duchesne? Yeah, that's a that's a big move to keep Tavares around. Oh yeah. Can know. they afford to keep Tavares around with that? Yeah, I know. I Especially know. with the six million. I don't know. We'll see where he lands if he lands anywhere or if he just doesn't come to training camp. Uh, somebody that did sign though, Bo Horvat, Vancouver Canucks, six years, thirty-three million dollars. 
five point mm-hmm. five per. Damn, that's that's a great signing. Oh yeah. Damn, after the signing of Thomas Vanek as well. Yes. From Vancouver, one year, two million. Um, the two Horvat million. contract that he's he's going to be their knight in shining armor, basically, and uh, he's going to lead their their youth. Um, so five point five per for six years. Yeah. The last three years of that contract, are, he's, it's going to turn into they fucking stole him. Oh god, yeah, yeah. And so I mean, good for Vancouver. Twenty two yeah, years old, it, but they're doing the right thing. I I feel with the rebuild. Mm-hmm. I I as great as this contract signing is, don't understand Thomas Vanek. I I, I, I I'm fine with that. It's way out of left field. It's for me. a simple veteran move. Let the guy keep playing. He probably wasn't – he's not going to get offers anywhere else. If he can play like he did last season where he was warranted as a trade deadline piece, they can get a draft pick for him or something. Sign oh. Yager then. <laughs> I I love – I think it's different. No, I know. Yeah. I mean, not – Yeah. Not, not really. I feel yeah, like no, – I feel it, like it, it is different. I feel like Yager would be a, a, a better choice. No know. one is gonna. It's proven with Yager not signing. No one is going to want Yager and give up what they can get possibly for Vanek. I believe. Yeah, Vanek is thirty three, and Yager was asking for more than two. Yeah, Yager is asking for. I think it was close to four or five. Mm-hmm. Vanek is just Vanek's going to be the guy that just bounces around from team to team for the next five years, if that. I don't know. I just don't know that I would want a guy who's, when he's hot, he's great, but when he's cold, he's completely irrelevant. I mean, at forty eight, he's more often cold. Six, than he, than Sixty-eight than he games, forty-eight points. On a team that's basically rebuilding right now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, why not give him a year shot? See what he does. Yeah. If things click, you could sign him for another two years. Yeah, I guess. I guess. Um, Alexander Wenberg. Also gets a six-year contract extension with the uh, the Blue Jackets, four point nine million per year. That's another good one. That's another good one. They love him in Columbus, Alexander Winberg. Um, it took him a while to get up to the uh, to the Jackets roster, but he had fifty-nine points in eighty games last year. Um, He's only twenty-two. Yeah, I know. I hate my life. <laughs> um, Winberg Atkinson. Felino, Panarin, Dubinsky, Seth Jones, Seth Jones, Wierenski, Bobrowski in the net. It's a solid squad. Yeah, with uh, Felino up front. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're uh, they got they got something special going on down there for sure. And yeah. uh, Seth Jones just came out during the I think it was during the NHL media and said that uh, quote We want to win the Stanley Cup right now. So I mean, uh, win a series first, and then maybe talk about winning the Stanley Cup. I don't know. I mean, with torts behind the bench, anything can happen. Yeah, I know, but no, I, I, I feel, honestly, I, I don't think they're making the playoffs this year. Yeah, but they, they're gonna be a good team down the line. Tell you what, if Artemi Panarin is like the man does that what he does, that leads them to the final and wins the whole thing, I'm, 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 I'm gonna kill him. <laughs> I'm probably gonna shoot him in the face. Don't be so sad. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. That makes me mad. Um. Yeah, good deal. I like it. Ten out of ten. Um. We we found this uh, today. Thought it was absolutely hilarious. Michelle Terrian, former coach for the Habs, who was replaced by. Uh, Claude Julian again this year again um, is is back to the Montreal Canadiens as a scout. So <laughs> okay, at least, at least he's not coaching anymore. Cause okay. I've never heard a good thing about him as a coach. Everybody hated him. Yeah, everybody hated him. Didn't he like start a revolt with Subban and Price and Gallagher and he's Pacioretty? the reason why Subban's gone. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I just thought that was funny. Yeah, it is. And they're bringing him back. Keep him away from the players, though. Um, former Canadian George Peros taking over for uh, 
uh, what Pronger? I Pronger. think we said Pronger yep. uh, as the new Department of Player Safety. Um, Stefan Quintal, uh, who was uh, serving as the senior vice president, uh, was the lead voice when it came to like suspensions and stuff like that over the past couple of years. So it wasn't um, wasn't Pronger's it was Quintal. Thanks, Jerem. Um, no, Pronger was still a part of it, though. Pronger was on the on the thing, on the on the board. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. And I think Paris is like Pronger was supposed to take that role, mm -hmm. but he went to Florida, so that's why they're going with Paris. Paris instead. Yeah. Interesting Paris. choice. Paris was one of the fucking probably the best muzzies since Lane McDonald. Oh my god. Great. Yeah. Unreal. Yeah. Talk about your grinder. I know. I think George it's Paros. great. I'd, oh, my God. It's great that these, the goons are the ones in charge of mm -hmm. player safety. They well, they know the ins and outs. Uh, exactly. Yeah. They know exactly. what. Especially George Peros. He, uh, what, he got. That was, uh, his career was ended with, yeah, the, the, with a fight. punch, and then he smacked his head on the ice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. he got knocked out and face planted, mm -hmm. basically. Yeah. That was, um, yeah, that was unfortunate. A bit, a bit uh, frightening. Um, yeah, I think it's, I think it's interesting. I hope, I hope he does well. Um, I didn't realize who's a Princeton guy. Yeah, he's brilliant. Smart. Dude. Yeah, a lot of these enforcers and stuff are actually super smart. Yeah, it's weird. You yeah. know, um, not most of them are, but um, Biz Nasty is not. No, God no. <laughs> Biz Nasty is. I love Biz Nasty, but no, he's not. He's not the smartest. He is, he's not. Um, but what Biz Nasty is, is officially retired. Um, out of the game. Out of the game. Kind of. Yeah, he's going to be the radio announcer for uh, the Coyotes. Um, he had a tweet where they uh, Coyotes made it like official, and uh, they said uh, Paul Bissonette is going to be joining us as the uh, radio color guy, and he went, wait, I thought this was to play again. <laughs> Somebody, I, I don't know if it was like this Instagram post or I was reading by it, but he was like, so why do you, he's like, I think I'll make a great color guy because while all these people are putting 24 minutes on the ice, focusing on their mm -hmm. game, I was on the bench picking up on everything, being able to talk to them. Hey, why'd you do that? Why'd you do this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and was, right before that, he was like, oh, a lot of people out there are going to be like, well, this guy couldn't even play in the NHL. Why, yeah. why would he be a good color guy? Tell me what the game is. <laughs> <laughs> he he kind of said that in his, uh. In his Instagram post, yeah, saying thank was. you to yeah. his friends and stuff, uh, his fr uh, friends and fans. Oh, the one where he's like, yeah, he's like all the coaches. I want to thank every coach I ever had. More importantly, the coach who told me to just start fighting because my skills were dog shit. <laughs> Obviously, the reason I got to play in the NHL. That's funny. Good for him, man. Yeah, he's so good. He, he lived the dream for twelve years. He also said that he was gonna. Uh, he had to kind of dial it back on Twitter now because he's got this job, and that makes me sad because he was a GM. Oh, on yeah. Twitter. <laughs> yeah, and he also said he played with some scrubs like Evgeny Malkin and Sidney Crosby. <laughs> Maybe you heard of them. <laughs> Maybe you've heard of them. Maybe. Not, sure. not a big deal. Not a big deal. Um, yeah. Oh, Biz yeah. Nasty, one of the good guys of the show. Yeah, one of the, honestly, one of the biggest beauties. Yeah. Social media was. Yeah. Just oh, unbelievable. God, yeah. If you're not following him on Instagram for his stories oh, on yeah. there, mm -hmm. do yourself a favor and go give him a follow. Like when he was out to eat at a fast food place and just sat down with some random guy <laughs> and just had a whole meal with this guy. I like the one where he was documenting him getting his Costco card with his girlfriend. <laughs> yes. So funny. Yeah. And then he walked outside of his apartment unit and they were shooting a, music, a mu rap music video and he just joined in on uh -huh. it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's got some legendary stories. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, he's good. All right, folks, I think that's about it. Yeah, hopefully uh, we'll start getting big news coming up. Yeah. Well, um, we have the uh, prospect camp, so yeah, at least we'll go over something. that. And, uh, but season's getting closer, so. How yeah. many days, Noli? 27. We're getting there. We're getting there, yeah. The Ronick. Been watching lots of. Oh, oh, yes. Ronick amount. Been watching lots of YouTube videos of just oh, yeah. random NHL shit. Yeah, like I've been I watched like highlights from Hawks games back in 08. Yeah, yeah, so exciting. Like we were saying, like I was the picture, the portrait of McJesus or not McJesus, uh -huh. Captain or General McDavid, mm -hmm. and Steve Daniels said it best. He's like, 
yeah, we need hockey back. Yeah. <laughs> like it's getting yeah. it's getting silly. Yeah, all the stuff we're doing. Yeah. All right. Thanks for joining us, y'all. Episode twenty one, the Makita for Poach, Noli, and Jerm. Adios. Bye. Bye. Follow the guys on Twitter at WCBP, on Instagram, WCB Podcast, and like them on Facebook, the Windy City Benders Podcast. The Windy City Benders Podcast.